Good morning and thank you for joining us for this study of God's Word. I hope that you're doing well today and that you're able to worship with us this morning at Pyburn Street Church of Christ at 10 a.m. We are currently engaged in a study of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is recorded for us in Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. Last week, we concluded a three-week study of Jesus' model prayer, which is often referred to as the Lord's Prayer. Today, we will pick up our study in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Of all of the social issues that Jesus could have spent time in his ministry speaking of, he spoke more about wealth than anything else. He spoke more about wealth than he spoke of marriage, of politics, of work, of sexual immorality, or of power. This indicates to us that wealth can be a problem that often stands in the way of true righteousness. God created us to be treasure seekers, but the problem is that we often pursue the wrong type of treasure. Jesus addresses this issue to correct us so that we can belong to his kingdom and be his true disciples. He begins with a very simple command. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. So does this mean that we cannot have possessions? Does this mean that we cannot possess anything at all? While some may be tempted to move in this extreme direction with this teaching, it does not fit the picture that we see of righteous people in the scriptures who were blessed by God with wealth. We do not see the condemnation of simply owning possessions in this verse, though we are warned in the scriptures that these things can steal our hearts and steal our priority from God. But rather, it is the pursuit of possessions that is an even greater danger. Do not accumulate possessions for yourself. It is the accumulation process that that is the even greater warning. Notice that it is a contrast that is given to us here in this command. Do not lay up, store up, and accumulate treasures on earth, but lay up, store up, and accumulate treasures in heaven. So Jesus is challenging us to look at our lives. Look at the things that we are making a priority. Are we looking at the things of this earth and treasuring up those things more than those spiritual things? For those spiritual things that we do in this life, those will be the things that will aid us whenever it comes to standing before the judgment seat of Christ. The book of Revelation tells us that when we pass from this life, if we have passed from this life in a faithful state, then we're going to rest from our labors and our works are going to follow us, those good things that we've done in this life in the name of Christ. Then those are spiritual treasures that we are laying up in heaven. They're for our advantage whenever this life comes to an end. So Jesus is challenging our hearts by looking at our lives. Does it look like we are treasuring treasures in heaven? or treasuring treasures on earth? Are we accumulating for ourselves treasures in heaven? Or are we accumulating more and more and more things here on this earth? Now Jesus gives us reasons why we must not accumulate for ourselves treasures on earth. The first reason that he gives is because everything that we accumulate for ourselves on earth is going to pass away. It's not something that is going to last very long. It's highly unlikely that anyone that is in the listening audience today can say that we still own the very first car that we owned. More than likely, we cannot say that we still own the very first phone that we ever had. More than likely, we cannot say that we still own and wear the same clothing that we wore 10, 20, 30 years ago. Why not? Well, we understand the problem. Because all of these things get old, they wear down, they break down, they become obsolete, and they do not work like they're supposed to work. So do not treasure 
earthly things because these earthly things, they become useless. They do not possess any lasting value. They are only temporary things. They wear out and they cannot satisfy because they are not lasting. But in contrast, the treasures of heaven are permanent and lasting. They cannot wear out. It does not take much for us to understand this concept, but it requires us to think about this truth. Consider when you pass away, how important will your accumulated wealth matter to you at that time? What value will all of your wealth and possessions have when you pass from this life? This is what Jesus is trying to get us to see. He's trying to put these things into a proper perspective for us. Treasure heavenly treasures, because those are the only ones that are going to last. Those are the only things that are eternal. But friends, the problem is that greed is very subtle. Everyone thinks that what they are doing with wealth is necessary. No one truly looks at themselves and believes that what they're doing is wrong. They don't look at this and say that we are simply accumulating wealth. No one thinks that they are laying up treasures for themselves on earth. No one thinks that they are being greedy and materialistic. Now, we may look at others and think that they're materialistic, but certainly not us. No, that's not something that we are succumbing to in any way. But it's amazing how easily these things capture our hearts and our minds. So this command requires some real honesty with ourselves. Notice that Jesus does not give an amount. Jesus does not say if you have more than six days or six months of food or wealth that at that point you're storing up treasures on earth. Well, this really is a question of the heart. Where is your love? Where is your devotion? What is it that you prize? What do you desire? Do you desire the things of this earth? Or do you desire heavenly things? Well, this is the point that he makes in verse 21, where he says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What happens to our treasure happens to us. What we treasure is where our total person and total being will be. It is the mirror into our hearts. Now we can carry on the charade of faithfully going to church while having our hearts really on earthly things. But the location of our treasure indicates where our heart is already. But notice again, Jesus does not say that possessions are the problem. The problem is our heart. The problem is our feelings toward those possessions. It is our desire to amass more. So we need to stop and we need to honestly examine our hearts. Consider some of the questions that we've looked at thus far this morning. We need to ask ourselves, where is our treasure? Are we storing up treasures on earth or are we storing up treasures in heaven? What is it that we are concerned the most with, spiritual things or physical things? What occupies our thoughts and our desires? What is it that we dread the most losing? What do we measure others by? What is it that we have that we cannot be happy without? Jesus tells us that the reason we must truly consider these things is because whatever dominates our heart is what is going to control our behavior as well. The thing that you treasure is what will control you. Then we come to verse 22. And I think that Jesus has changed the subject when we get to this point in his sermon. But if we carefully look at the context, we will notice that he's not really left the discussion of treasures in heaven behind, because whenever we get to verse 24, he will continue to warn about serving God or serving money. So what is the point of Jesus telling us now to consider our eyes? 
Well, first, Jesus begins with a statement, the eye is the lamp of the body. And Jesus continues that when your eye is healthy, then your whole body will receive light. But if your eye is bad, then your whole body will be full of darkness. Well, it's truly a very simple image. What is it that you're looking at in life? What is your eye set upon? What What is the focus of your attention? The way that we look at wealth is a sure barometer of our spiritual condition. Wealth is not something that is to be hoarded and accumulated. It is a blessing from God. Now, do we see that what we have is a blessing from God to enjoy and use? Do we see that what we have as God's blessing to enjoy with our family? Do we see that what we have is God's blessing to us and we are to use that to advance the work of the kingdom? The condition of the eye determines if our body is receiving light or receiving darkness. But what is the condition of the eyes of our heart? What is it that is blocking our spiritual vision? You see that Jesus is telling us that if we are continuing to look at money and possessions, then this problem is one that cannot be fixed. What is it that you are staring at? What is drawing your focus? Because that is what is going to affect your heart. It's like thinking that we're going to stare at Halloween candy and not eat a few pieces of it. What we look at affects our heart. And this is why lust corrupts the heart. Wealth corrupts the heart. Envy and jealousy corrupt the heart. Rivalry corrupts the heart. But to address our problem, we must stop looking at these things and settle our hearts on these things. But then as we come to verse 24, Jesus gives us this truth that we must accept and believe. No one has the ability to serve two masters. Now, we often think that we can, but when it comes down to it, we can't. It is impossible for a divided heart to serve a master properly. Either I am putting my hope in and seek after the treasures of this earth for my joy and satisfaction, or I'm putting my hope in and seek after God for my joy and my satisfaction. We cannot be a full and faithful servant to both. Either we're going to serve God over self or we're going to serve self over God. There's not really another option that we can take. The things of this world are rivals to the love of God. And money is one of the greatest rivals of God's love because we look to money to bring us security and peace and happiness and hope rather than looking to God. A Christian is a person who turns from idols to serve the living God, 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 9. But I want us to think about what Jesus is teaching. We cannot store up treasures in both places. Our devotion is either with God and his pursuits or it's with self and our own pursuits. We cannot serve God and also serve something else or someone else. Only one person can be on the throne of our hearts. And it's either God on the throne or it's ourself that we put on that throne. And these two things cannot coexist. This is why Jesus says that we must deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. I cannot rule my life and think that I'm letting God rule my life. I cannot store up the treasures of earth for myself and think that I've also stored up the treasures of heaven for myself. We must choose this day who we're going to serve. One of the verses from a song that we often sing in our worship reminds us of this truth. From the song Trust and Obey, the verse begins, But we will never prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. Friends, how true this is, how powerful that statement is. We have not begun to enjoy the delights of God's love if we have not first sacrificed our worldly pursuits. Friends, Jesus presents a choice between two ways of life. There's two treasures, 
but where will our treasure be? Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program this morning. We hope that God blesses you with a wonderful day.